Starting off with some of the simpler elements, here I'm making a cylindrical spacer. The display stack for the orary requires dozens of these, so I try to make them in the fastest, most efficient way possible. I cannot tell you how much I'd like a CNC lathe right about now. The first step is taking down the diameter with a nice, slow feed rate. This makes for a perfect and final finish, which looks great. The exterior diameter of these spacers is not critical. I try to keep it to within 10 thousandths of an inch to the target of half an inch diameter. Next, but not shown, I use a center point drill to make a small hole in the center of the rod. Here, I'm using a 964th inch drill bit to make a hole. I just had it lying around. Next, I'm using a quarter inch drill bit to make the final hole. I'm being very careful to count how many revolutions I crank the tailstock, making sure the drill goes far enough, but not too far. The reason there's a quarter inch hole through all these spacers is because there's a quarter inch stainless steel rod which goes all the way through the display stack to support the entire structure. Finally, I cut off the spacer at the correct final length using a cutoff tool. This is my first physically large project, and one of the many challenges was making large parts. The sorority is 14 inches in diameter, which means my vise, with its 6 inch wide jaws, is not going to cut it. So I bought a huge slab of aluminum, which I can secure to the table with step locks and clamps. You can see I used the clamps to secure an aluminum plate above the aluminum block. My first step is drilling holes in the aluminum plate, which will be used later to secure it to the aluminum block below with screws. Here you can see the clamps are moved back to secure the base instead of the plate. You can also see the screws holding the plate down. And here's some cutting action, making the features on one side of the plate. And here's my finishing pass around the outer edge. I am looking for a great finish, so I'm using a 5500 RPM with 14 inch feed rate and a quarter inch end mill to accomplish this. Here's some footage of making the top plate, which is the most visible part of the orary. Each planet in the display stack is driven by a large gear. As you can see, the toolpaths are highly visible for these gears, which is not the effect I want. So how do I deal with this? <laughs> not by hand, that's for sure. I have nine of these gears, and they are huge. So instead I use a random orbit sander with a 5 inch disc. These discs, which I suspect are meant primarily for woodworking, wear out very quickly. I found myself using four sanding discs per gear. This video is obviously sped up. Uh, it takes around 30 minutes per gear to get a really nice finish. Also, on another note, I apologize for the poor camera angle. You probably weren't expected to see so much elbow in this video. I'm about as new to making videos as I am to machining, so obviously I have a lot of room to improve. Uh, and I will work on that in the future. If you have any tips, criticisms, or whatever, feel free to leave it in the comment section below, and I'll take a look. It's hard to see how everything works when the orary is fully assembled. Each large outer ring holds two gear tracks, a small one and a large one. The reason for the two different sizes is so I can vertically compress the two gears closer together. With two different sized tracks, I can have one gear above and one gear below, with the supporting bearings for those gears sharing some vertical space. These bearings are V-groove ball bearings. Here is the rig assembly with two gears attached. Notice the bottom gear is resting against the desk. 
so that I can rotate the rest of the assembly instead of the actual gear. Here's a close-up shot of the V-groove bearings in action. Here I'm installing a ring assembly to the full display stack for a test fit. I must make sure everything aligns well. Gears from this ring do not interfere with the previous ring. Make sure that the planet arbors are concentric enough so that they rotate freely. This step can be a little time consuming, so we're going to move on ahead. It takes some adjustment to get everything to fit perfectly. And speaking of perfection, here is the test to see how well a gear meshes with the planetary gear. Ah, oh, just look at that. It doesn't get more perfect than that. This quality is checked for all nine planetary gears. Changing pace a little bit, here are the zodiac signs which are used to decorate the top plate. Unlike a lot of the other parts in the orary, these are very delicate, very small parts, and so I thought I would show you how I went about making these. So here's the simulated toolpath, and I use a quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth inch, and thirty second inch end mills to produce these parts. And for those of you wanting real-world machining video, here's um, some machining action. But, you know, the, the parts are so small, it's actually kind of hard to see. So I decided to show you the simulation instead. To give you some sense of proportion, this is a 1 32nd inch end mill which I use. My feed rate is 1.8 inches per minute which is very slow, and 6,000 RPM, which is the maximum speed my spindle can go. And here's the completed display stack for my orary. This project took several months to complete, working mostly on the weekends. Uh, but of course, the project isn't finished yet. This is just the display stack which will sit on top of a calculation stack, which will in turn sit on top of a wooden base. There is one central post which will hold the sun, then nine concentric tubes, one for each planet. Here you can see how each tube is connected to one of the wings. Ultimately, these wings will be driven by a very long gear train in a section called the calculation stack. If you like this project and would like to see the calculation stack and the base once they're finished, feel free to subscribe to my channel. It really helps keep me motivated to keep working on these projects. Until next time.